Hello, everyone. This is just a quick sound check. We're going to get going in about 60 seconds here, just right at the top of the hour. So don't go too far. All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's presentation. Onboarding new customers, that's the topic of the day. You obviously want to do a lot of it, but we know that the process is not always as straightforward and can sometimes be a bit painful. The good news is, is that new customer onboarding has come a long way in the past recent uh, few years due to dramatically improved tools and a better understanding of processes. Today, we're going to be discussing how you can handle onboarding in the current work environment that we're seeing with working remote, and of course, leveraging the automation power of IT Glue and LionGuard to make your onboarding that much more easier. Today, I'm really excited to be presenting on behalf of IT Glue, and we're also here with LionGuard to be teaming up and delivering this great presentation to you today. My name is Travis. I'm one of the sales engineers here at IT Glue. At IT Glue, we believe in transforming the way that managed service providers think about efficiency and IT documentation with our industry leading documentation platform. Prior to me coming aboard IT Glue, I was uh, with an MSP here in Western Canada as a support technician. So I've definitely been in your team's shoes doing the onboarding process. Later then, I was working as a project manager uh, for our infrastructure projects. And then I was also overseeing our onboarding process for all of our new customers. And I was in charge of making sure inception and handoff from the sales team uh, was smooth, uh, making sure documentation was in, entered into our documentation system. And then finally making sure everything was signed off and ready for our service desk to support. So with that said, I'm really happy. Be, this is one of my favorite topics to, to talk about. And I'm really excited to be uh, joined by my friend at LineGuard uh, Scott here, who also has some experience in this as well. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Hey, Travis, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so I'm Scott Davis. I have over 20 years uh, in leading IT infrastructure, network security compliance for businesses of all sizes. That includes six years at MSPs in different roles. I have in-depth knowledge of multi-year business planning, cybersecurity, technology documentation, workflow design, client onboarding, which was one of the most joyful aspects of everything that I got to do in the MSPs was just bringing new clients in. Uh, but project management, network design, as well as extensive knowledge in PCI, DSS, HIPAA, NIST, GDPR, CCPA. For whatever reason, I found a lot of joy in learning, you know, the different state breach notification laws and international laws with it. Uh, so I bring all that knowledge and experience to help MSPs truly succeed with LionGuard. Uh, so I'm ready to get started. So Travis, let's get rolling. All right, sounds great. Well, we have a packed agenda for you today. And today we're going to be taking a deep dive into how a smooth onboarding process will build trust between you and your clients. We will be sharing some best practices on how to onboard new customers with using tools like IT Glue and LineGuard. We know that these tools are gonna dramatically speed up your onboarding time, which will provide fast visibility for your service desk to get servicing your customers that much more quicker. And finally, we're gonna share some of our thoughts on how this is all changing in the past nine months as we're vastly transforming into a remote first world. So before we get too far, I do wanna take you through a few housekeeping items. In case you are taking notes, that's fantastic, but you don't need to worry too much as we are recording this session and we will make it available to you via email once we get the download and are able to process it and send out that email. 
You'll also notice down at the bottom that there are two options inside of Zoom. You have a Q&A option where you're welcome to answer or ask us questions that we'll answer at the end. And there's also going to be a chat button where we have two of our lovely people behind the scenes who don't get to uh, always want to show their pretty faces like Scott and I here, who are gonna be helping us out and making sure that uh, all your technical issues are answered and also just interacting with you in the chat there. So we have Cynthia from LionGuard and we also have uh, my friend Carlos from IT Glue. Thanks guys. So let's jump in and get going. And Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, why new customers come to an MSP? No, absolutely. So as you start a business relationship with your prospects or your new customers, it's important to think through why they've decided to engage your MSP. You know, the reasons could be they left their previous IP. You know, is it a trust issue? Is it they got breached? Is it the they just outgrew the relationship they had. You know, those are all examples I remember very, you know, rand or common came up of why people started engaging us. I think trust or just outside outgrowing what they were getting were some of the main reasons. Are they new to managed services? You know, you're going to have those one man bands, those one man shops that, you know, the IT guy left because the IT guy outgrew the operation. And they're looking now of, you know, do we hire someone new or do we go into managed services and gain that? Uh, is it an acquisition? You know, did a company that you're already supporting acquire another company and you're bringing in now a whole new stack of customers, a whole new stack of a business to manage? Are you doing any co-managed IT where they have that established IT department and they just need a little bit of help, maybe with security, maybe with just monitoring? And, you know, I think trust is such an important aspect just because of how critical it is that you just have to be there and the customer has to trust you. Travis? Yeah, I think that that's a really great point. And I think especially as we get into that uh, more co-managed era, especially as we have more and more cloud applications that are spanning multiple uh, different departments in the business and these businesses are growing, that we need to build that trust uh, with the customer. And that is a really uh, key part to our relationship between a managed service provider and the end customer. Now, onboarding into managed services is all about documentation, especially as we get into these uh, different uh, as a service offerings that we are giving to our customers. So does your team have access to all the info that they need? And are they able to service your customer on your promised service level agreement? I love this saying here, documentation gives you the transparency that no one else has. You're able to pull up the data and show a prospect or the track record that you have of hitting SLAs. You can also show them how they will record their information and explain why this improves the service that they're going to receive. So this is a really powerful tool in the sales process as well. And if you joined us for our last webinar, we touched on this um, where I was with Sean at LionGuard and talking about this as well, but this just really extends down into the onboarding process as well. But remember that, that you need to, if you, if you promise that during your sales cycle, you also need to show them the value that when you're onboarding, like this is why I'm asking you so many questions is because this is really to help you in the future. It may sound painful as I kind of interrogate you on, on why you made these choices and why you have these systems, but it's important for us to understand in order to provide that service. What we found is that there's different levels uh, that MSPs are at in their onboarding maturity, so to speak. At the lower end, you're likely in sort of a break fix model and you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants and you're working with some of your inherited documentation and infrastructure that you may not even have full access to. At this level, each of your customers looks very different. This is in terms of the documentation that you have, but also the, the way the stack of technology that they have, which we know is something that the industry has been trying to push towards standardizing that across all your customers. If you're somewhere at the midpoint here, you're realizing that there needs to be some standardization. You have some checklists and processes in place so that every time you get on a customer, you know what it is that you're gonna look for, but it's a very manual at this point here. Many of our customers are at this point, which is, which is great. I'm so happy to see that this, this shift has, has happened in the past four to five years. And I'm starting to actually see some more and more people coming into the, this next curve here, which is that higher level of maturity, 
where automation and checklists are becoming a bigger role in making sure that onboarding is completed even faster and has less mundane tasks that are going to be uh, needed to be completed by the technicians that are heading on site. By moving up to this next sort of level of documentation and onboarding maturity, you're going to be able to more quickly deliver the services that you are promising um, right off the bat. So, you know, you're signing that agreement and you're taking that on-ramp time from six, four to six weeks, maybe down to two to four weeks. You're gonna be able to start building that trust that we just talked about and impress your customer and start that relationship on the right foot. This is also a really great opportunity to identify vulnerabilities in the infrastructure and start getting a head start on those potential sales opportunities that your um, proactive team is gonna to wanna to start selling uh, to them as soon as you get them up and running and supporting them. So how do you move up and how do you start leveraging some automation into your onboarding process? Well, a documentation solution is likely gonna play a really key part of that as we know the onboarding is all about documentation collection. So we know that we have checklists and processes and those are gonna fit really nicely in IT Glue to help uh, standardize the way that you're collecting that information. Here at IT Glue, we're pushing your team towards standardization, which makes it a lot easier uh, to find information going forward. But this also means that you're not gonna be sifting through that information dump that you get from a previous IT provider that you're able to massage it and put it into a, a format that's gonna be available for your team and make them really fast on the service desk. IT Glue customers have a lot of different tools that they can use to speed up the process, but this is what a common workflow typically looks like. Usually you're gonna start with your syncing your PSA tool and getting that CRM, CRM information into IT Glue. This is things like the people you're working with, um, the names of the companies, your agreements, you're then likely going to start deploying some of your RMM agents to your known servers and workstations and start gathering information on that. You may use a network discovery tool like Network Glue that I'm wearing the shirt for today to find some of those other devices that maybe aren't so obvious. Maybe those workstations that are hidden under desks or switches that are in closets that you didn't know about and making sure those are um, found and you, and you know that they exist and you document those. The next step that we're really starting to see take a, a really big hold of our industry now is to start using automated tools like LineGuard to help document some of the other services uh, that may not be as apparent um, right away and starting to get that information in there automatically and really quickly. And now that you have a lot of this automated work being done, you can focus on some of the manual documentation that requires more of the human touch to be captured completely. And finally, you want to go ahead and share this result with your customer by maybe printing a runbook for them or sharing and giving them access to this documentation inside of MyGlue so that you can start building that trusting relationship. Now, I mentioned IT Glue a few times in here and how that really helps. There are a few key features uh, for those of you who are existing IT Glue customers that you may want to take advantage of. The first one that we hit on is the ability to use integrations and automations with tools like LionGuard. Any of those checklists and procedures that you're going to need to still do manually are also stored inside of IT Glue. And finally, we have transparency um, in building that trust by having MyGlue as an option to, for them to log in and see the documentation themselves. Now, I mentioned LionGuard a few times and I wanna turn it over to Scott here to tell us a little bit more about why these tools work together and why it's so important that they come together. Absolutely. When LineGuard and IT Glue come to work together, MSPs can standardize their onboarding process. And this makes your onboarding faster. It shortens the time that it takes to demonstrate your value. And it empowers your team to uncover insights and share visible progress with your customers like never before. Literally, you will onboard faster. You will shorten the time to show that value. You will uncover things you didn't realize and you didn't know. And the visible progress to the customers is going to highlight your MSP like never before. So LionGuard and IT Glue like onboarding fast. Like I just said, you know, when you leverage LionGuard, your onboarding can go from a month to roughly a day and a half. And that's really fast. So onboarding new clients, documenting their system, it takes about an average on hour 
an, an, an uh, about an hour on average. Besides saving you dozens of hours of manual documentation, the fast onboarding also enables you to show the value of your service. Like I said, but let's think about this for a second, just to you know spread it out. You know, in my experience at MSPs, I was part of that onboarding team. And before LionGuard, I'd go out on site, I'd bring a technician, I'd bring, you know, um, network admin, and we'd go through and we would document top down for that customer. You know, we'd look at the firewall, we'd look at all the switches, we'd look at everything. We'd go into every office, for, you know, follow the network jacks, look for little hidden 10100 four port switches from Best Buy. You know, we would try to document everything we could. Some of it was automatic, some of it was manual, but there was a lot of manual documentation that took place. LionGuard gives it, gave us that capability of eliminating a lot of that manual work because through the different inspectors, we were able to analyze what was on the network, connect the inspectors to those, which would actually go in, pull the configuration items and compare that to our already established best practices. So the next slide here is, you know, what does it look like? So within an hour, you have your domain and license expiration. So this screen here is just talking TLS SSL, but we do this for every one of our inspectors. So you can quickly audit users to show your customer what users need to be removed from the system, what licenses can be reallocated. So with users, it's, hey, our quick scan, we found a whole bunch of users that are active, but they haven't been used in over 30 days or 60 days. What licenses? Hey, with our Office 365 inspector, you can get real quick analytics of, hey, we're showing your Office 365 has 15 active licenses, but you know, you're actually paying for 20 licenses. So you're actually spending more money a month than you need to be. This saves your customers money. And from time and from the time your first day on the job, you're also seeing what's expiring soon. Like that's the report I have here. You know, we're showing TLS SSL certificates that are expiring. You can see the same thing with the domain expirations, uh, license expirations in Cisco Meraki. But onboarding doesn't end after an hour. Let your customers know that you're going to be back. One thing that I like to do. Uh, so my last role at the MSP was what we what you've heard of as the VCIO. And I would come back at 30 days after that initial onboarding with a complete security and efficiency audit. So that deep, you know, that deep dive into their systems, their environment really gave a ton of value and it showed a ton of visible progress. But more importantly, it showed our MSP knew what we were doing. The template of that matched the template from the cell. So we were all about, you know, maintaining that look and feel. And it just, it shows so much in the long-term aspects. Once a week, you know, you could send them a quick bulleted summary of your progress that explains what you've uncovered. You can do it in that 30 day. Really with LionGuard and IT Glue, your documentation is going to step up a notch to things that you, you couldn't imagine until you integrate the two. So why do you need fast visibility at the start of your customer relationship? And just like life doesn't wait until you're ready to come at you, neither does IT. That fast visibility is gonna help you hit the ground running. So you can tackle the problems before they arise. Getting these insights is going to help your technicians. You know, when you have every client documented the same way and that documentation is automatically updated as frequently as three times a day, you always have the most recent documentation for your technicians at their fingerprints. And when you onboard a new customer and you bring them into that same documentation standard, they now already know where to find the information. So it's no more trying to figure out, okay, well, who documented it? Because so-and-so documents it this way. We're standardizing that documentation platform. So every environment is documented the same way. Now, to get some insight for you, I want to pass it back to Travis for a poll. Yeah, we have a kind of, we were discussing this just before we came on here. We wanted to know what something happens, like you sign a new contract and then boom, your printer stops working or worse, they get ransomware. <laughs> and problems don't always wait for onboarding to appear. So we wanted to hear from you as to how quickly you might have seen a problem start um, when you onboarded a new customer. 
So in the poll here, as you can see, we've just made it live on your screen. How quickly into your customer relationship have you seen a problem start? I'd expect to a few see a lot of, oh, I was going to say, I don't expect to see a lot of these. You know, you jump right in with both feet. It's, it's always a mess. So that's what it looks like. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and call the poll there. Thanks, everyone, for that. I'm going to share the results with you. Um, for those of you who are watching on the recording right now, I'll read the results out to you. So one of the, we had a few categories here. So we had within the, uh, within the first week, within the first month, within the first three months, and then we had, I jumped in both feet into the mess. So as you can see, that was the one that, you know, 62% of you said that they're jumping in with problems, things on fire, right, right even before they, before they go. But then the other, the next category here, about 20% of you are saying before the first month. And if we just said that your onboarding takes, you know, four to six weeks to complete, that means that you're halfway through and either you're already in, you're inheriting a problem or you are, you're getting one, you know, within a few days. Now, Scott, how did you manage this when you were, you were working there? I know it's been a few years since I've been there. So we've, I have a few stories of, about that, but I kind of want to hear more recently how you are, you're, you're managing, managing these risks by jumping, you know, jumping in feet first in, in this way, this uh, is showing here. No, and you definitely get that. You're going to have those customers that come in and they're coming to you because they have an issue that, you know, their current vendor or their current supplier is not able to fix. So it's very often that you're jumping in with both feet into the active fire and you're trying to fix it. That's never going to go away. But your sales team needs to make sure they're doing excellent due diligence, identifying what those risks are so that your technician team can be ready when that client finally signs the line. And often those happen very fast, but the sales team communicating back to the technicians or the service manager, letting them know, hey, we're doing this. This is why they're calling us out. They may sign quick. I just want you to make sure that you have your teams available and ready to go because, you know, or what is the window of how quick we can get out to resolve this? And depending on the type of fire, it may be we need you as soon as possible, or, you know, is it something we can do next week to push this up? You know, but standardizing that security stack is another thing that you can do to try to help alleviate jumping into a forest fire. Um, when you get to a more mature level as MSP, then you can start kind of bundling in a firewall. You know, say you want Cisco Meraki firewalls at every one of your client sites. When you bundle that into your contract up front, you can really align your security stack so that you're maintaining that same posture of security across all of your clients. At the end of the day, the last thing you want as an MSP is to walk into a new environment, you're supporting them for a couple months, you're kind of talking to them about why they should update that firewall, they don't do it, then bam, they give you a phone call that, well, you're protecting us and we just got ransomware. And if it's a healthcare, then it's a whole different issue because of breach and notifications and everything else. So you want to make sure you're doing that due diligence, understanding the risks for you as a business, as an MSP, but also understanding the risks that they have so that you can resolve those as quickly as possible. Because if all you're doing is facing issues, you're just spinning your wheels and you're never really getting to a proactive point. That then moves on, you know, fast visibility. You know, the bottom line is the moment that you sign the contract, your team needs to deliver all the expectations you set in that sales process. So how do you make sure that what you do while you're learning the customer system, what do you do during that sales process that you're communicating back to that, you know, your technicians? One option is ask your customer to agree to an SLA clause that doesn't take effect until 30 days. This gives you a little bit of breathing room. It gets you kind of acquainted with their systems. What we did or what my experience is, is I always push customers to institute a one month overlap with the previous MSP. Through that, I would actually set up three meetings with, you know, I called it the losing MSP. Sometimes I was the losing MSP, you know, if we were losing a customer, but the other MSP, we would set up three meetings. We would discuss, you know, what the transition is going to look like. You know, what are the different components? Are you using Barracuda? Are you using X? Are you using Y? Are you using Z? You know, what all are you using? 
an IT glue is one. You know, if you can get an export of that, uh, you know, the CSV of all that IT glue, you can import all of their documentation that they already have. And that actually helps you establish that baseline documentation. So it's understanding what they have now, bringing that over to you and setting a schedule to it. You don't want to just come in and say, okay, today's our switch over day. We're switching everything over because you can do it in peace now. You can move Office 365 and you both can have partner access to that 365 at the same time. Typically your email filters, your security filters, you're going to have a little bit of it. Okay, we have to transition from yours to ours or we're transitioning it from your account into my account with the same vendor. But understanding that and giving you that one month window where they're still providing you know, that baseline support, you're kind of covering up and picking up the pieces as you transition them over into your service structure. But the customer is going to have a better experience and by being prepared, by pushing this, it's making sure that they have a high level of service all the time. Now, you're going to have some customers that come up and they're going to be like, they're horrible. I don't want to deal with them anymore. You're taking over on Monday. And as an MSP, we have to evolve. You just have to take care of it. Um, and we all can adjust to that. Fast visibility lets you start off relationships with new customers on the right foot. I can't say that strong enough. It does, you, know, you can be proactive in replacing old equipment, streamlining the customer's IT stacks. Uh, on the service desk side, fast onboarding means setting your team up for success. That's giving them the right documentation, putting it into the right places, and getting these immediate wins to start delivering that incredible user experience. And let's be honest, it's easier to win some end users than it is to win others. You may have an end user that was in love with the previous IT company. You know, you have to put extra attention and show them that extra love and extra caring that, hey, I know you like them really a lot, but let me show you why you should like us too. And that's all with that fast visibility. Uh, it also increases MRR. So apart from a better experience for your customers and end users, Fast visibility could mean increased MRR. Well, remember that 30-day audit I mentioned a few slides ago? Well, let's go back to that. You know, if you conduct that kind of that state of an IT type document, that assessment in your first 30 days with every new customer, which LionGuard can help give you tremendous fast visibility into all of your customer systems so you can easily pull that 30-day report, you can be proactive and get back to your client with this report quickly. So the major opportunity here is to show that you have a deep understanding of their systems very quickly, explain what you've uncovered and how you've resolved it, you know, relatively quickly within those first 30 days, but also breaking out now a three-year plan to address the projected future operational and security needs. You know, hey, I see that your firewalls expiration, you know, expired. We can renew the license for a year or I can put a better firewall in, and this is why I recommend this route um, because of X, Y, and Z. It also can help push it into that stack. Identifying switches. You know, I've gone through so many that I have found 10, 100 switches just as recently as 2019. Last year, I found 10, 100 switches still at client environments. Like there's no reason for it. It slows down aspects. Uh, and these were going from, you know, the wall jack into two or three computers. And people were like, well, it's always slower for us than it is for them on the other side of the room. You can project those operational security needs. What are the large expenses that you forecast? Is there a server project coming up in year one, year two, year three? Do you wanna move them over into Azure Active Directory and Azure server environment? You know, leverage LionGuard to gather all the data you need, let it summarize it for you, then you put it into your template, your assessment document, and then you present it to the customer and you're going to see increased MRR as you increase your service stack with them, but also some NRR in those projects that come up. So this is that huge upsell opportunity and just another way that you show your commitment to your customers by teaming up IT Glue with LionGuard. So IT Glue has some great features for vast visibility as well. And I'd love for Travis to cover some of those with you. Yeah. And like, thanks Scott. And it's, it's really important because you have a lot of tools inside of, of LionGuard, a lot of these different inspectors that are going to help to pull this information and make that 30-day report so much easier to, to build. And that's part of that integration that we have there and, and making it available in IT Blue is going to help with your continuing 
uh, service desk operations as well. And continuing to uh, make IT Glue a part of your technician workflow, uh, that is going to help uh, your team be able to service them, you know, every day, day in and day out. We've built some other features that are going to help you get ahead while you're doing this, including those checklists that are going to help you streamline the workflow of, of common tasks like new user creates or new workstation builds. And then, of course, Network Glue as well is going to help um, kind of augment that data that um, LineGuard is pulling in with, with their integration in there to help take some of those mundane tasks off of your shoulders uh, and, and make it so that you can actually start doing the proactive work that your customers uh, need. Now, as we decentralize, we move to the cloud and more recently moved to a more fully remote operation, being able to connect and document cloud systems is more important than ever. Your customers are relying on these solutions more than ever, and it's your job to get them up to speed quickly, even if you are the incoming provider, because like we've, like we've been talking about, you can inherit a mess on day one, it could happen day two. And so you need to be able to get your team up to speed really quickly. Now, getting visibility into these many different home office setups that we're all dealing with right now adds time exponentially to the process. And so managing the expectations is going to be really important as we can as we start to onboard and continue um, as we head into the next three, six, 12 months or so. So Scott, I wanted to ask you what you're hearing about from your customers about trying to do remote onboarding when everyone's working from home. You know, I think 2020 has been unique in so many ways. And I think it's been a more technological shift in how people use technology than any time in history, uh, even with the advent of the new computer, because it wasn't as rapid as this push to work from home or into this modern workforce. And, you know, it isn't the same as, you know, it, and onboarding today isn't the same as it was a year ago because COVID has literally turned everything on its head, but the onboarding still has to happen. You just have to pay special attention to how you onboard, specifically in engaging with your end users. As more and more employees aren't in the office, it's not like during the onboarding that you can walk around and introduce yourself at, or have a pizza party and get everyone together to welcome, you know, your new MSP into their environment because there's restrictions on sometimes how many people you can have at that pizza event. Um, so it's really about engaging with the end users, understanding and preparing for home environments while considering those unique circumstances that may impact your services. And I used to go to customers' offices and I'd meet you know, those end users, like I said, you know, either at a pizza party that we would host or do something else. And I used it as that opportunity to engage with them, to start building the relationship, to show that, hey, our IT isn't just an IT vendor, but we're a face. You know, we're here with you. You're a partner with you. We would actually distribute gift boxes to each user that would kind of cover, you know, a little client guide. It would give them some candy. It would give them, our, you know, our contact information, you know, with the key information, hours, phone numbers, email address, ticketing instructions. You know, it makes a humongous difference. And you can still do that. And, you know, it gets a little bit trickier now with everyone kind of working from home, but you can still do something to engage with those users. You know, is it a Zoom meeting, you know, or X, Y, Z, you know, just trying to figure something out. Um, so, you know, what does it look like? You know, how do you make your end users feel important in this fully remote world? You really have to think outside the box. You know, is it doing an Uber Eats or Amazon gift card, you know, digitally mailing gift boxes out, just little, little things to show that you appreciate them, even though they're not in the office. Because at the end of the day, you're not just supporting the company's internet connection anymore. You're supporting the company's internet connection, all the company's equipment in their office. But now you're also going to be getting phone calls of, I'm not connecting right. My internet at home isn't working. I'm from central Pennsylvania, so I can drive 30 minutes and I am in the middle of nowhere that my top internet download speeds, probably five to 10 megs. Whereas I can be in the middle of a metropolitan city that I'm getting gigabit speeds for through multiple vendors. So depending on the area you're in, you're going to see a wide array of what technology the end users have to work with 
that you're now supporting that you weren't before. So it's critical to continue engaging those end users. And as you build that rapport with your end users, do your best to get a better understanding of that home environment and document it. Now, I'm not saying you want to learn, you know, what your ISP uh, or I mean, what your account number is for that home ISP, but you want to document what you can because you're going to support it one way or another. Make sure you share any minimum connectivity requirements with your employees, you know, building those documentations with your customers. You know, what are the inter minimum internet speeds to connect to the VPN or use that application that's web-based. Keep a closer eye on security than before. Phishing attempts have been hugely successful this year for two reasons. One, you lost the capability of, hey, I just got this phishing email that looks weird, you know, being able to just look over your shoulder and ask your coworker, hey, did you get this email too? It doesn't look right. Now it's really, it's up to them to trust their instincts. Uh, you know, audit the complete deployment of your security software to endpoints. Always keep in mind your customer's unique circumstances. If the company you're working with deals with highly secure information, you have to document home networks or consider placing a firewall at employees' homes that are utilizing or accessing this highly secure data. Make sure you think through all the different needs of your client so you can deliver the best, but also the right service that they need. Travis, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I think that there's so many different circumstances and I... I think everyone is in different parts of understanding how long they're, this is going to stay. You know, there's some companies that are saying we're going to stay remote forever. Well, the solution that on March 20th to run down to Staples and grab any computer that you could get your hands on isn't going to be a long-term solution. So um, how, do, how, do you, how do you adjust that now? And it's like, okay, well, now we have all these desktops that are back in the office that are never going to be used again. Are we still paying for licenses on those? And you know, I think that we probably were, were very quick to respond. I think some people have said that, you know, MSPs are like the, the first responders of the economy when, uh, you know, March and April happened. And, you know, we did a really great job, I think, as an industry there. But now that we're here in November 6 and saying, okay, what are we going to do next? And what changes are we going to need to make to for the next six months? And what does that look like? You know, we can't just continue in this holding pattern of, waiting it out you know it seems like we're going to have to really make some drastic changes and some of those might be we're going to have to you know go ahead and suggest that we get the the meraki uh, teleworker gateways for all of our customers um, and put firewalls down there or we're going to have to you know sell off some equipment you know there's there's a lot of things that i think we're going to have to make some good changes on to consider a lot of these remote work and unique circumstances yeah, the last thing uh, before we recap, I'd like to just put in is I think just data privacy and data security has to be on your mind. You know, I mentioned data a couple of times, Travis mentioned data a couple of times, but making sure that you're a securing the data with IT glue and line guard, you know, we're doing it for you there. But securing your customers' data is crucial as well. With everyone in that modern workforce, you know, accessing data, you don't have that checks and balances of, you know, are they putting it on an external drive to keep it, you know, a local copy? Are they sharing it appropriately? Is their kid using the same computer to do schoolwork and play games as they're using for this? Uh, you know, you really have to start asking questions, especially as more and more data becomes under that breach compliance laws of the different states, the different federal governments, the different countries. We have to look at that more and more. And I think you're gonna see a push more towards, you know, those virtual servers, uh, you know, uh, the RDP servers, remote desktop servers using VMware view, uh, Horizon view, you know, et cetera, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have to think about what the next, the next curve is what I like to call it, jumping to the next, uh, you know, kind of evolution here where we're kind of beyond just, you know, tweaking things and, and, and changing things. We have to start thinking a little bit outside the box for some of those. Okay, we didn't think like, you know, transitioning to completely remote desktop and getting rid of uh, thick clients. Everyone's going to be on thin clients. We thought maybe that's five years away. Well, it's happening now. These are conversations and they're tough. We're going to have to start having now. Yeah, so I think what we've really covered today is that the, the need to onboard quickly and we know that we're able to do it as both as humankind and as, as, as MSPs, we were able to adapt so quickly this year to the, the changing environments and we need to continue 
to take the lessons that we've learned from that and apply it to our onboarding process going forward. And we also took you through some of the onboarding best practices around using the line guards and IT glue and starting to build in that automation is going to help to make for fast visibility that's going to make your service desk team able to respond much quicker. We want we want things done now when they sign the contract they they sort of have a um, a, a, a and want to have you helping them out right away. And then as we just talked about onboarding in a remote first world is, is really changing, um, changing the way that we're doing business in, in a lot of ways. And I think that the way we onboard and the way we service our clients is, is definitely taking a, a big change. So I encourage you to, to think about that. So with that said, if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. While you are doing that, I am just going to take a quick moment to let you know um, that we do have part three of our series with, with LionGuard coming up. Um, I'll be chatting with Bill on Wednesday, November 18th, um, 9 a.m. Pacific, about how accurate system documentation can uh, further work on that security aspect that Scott and I were just talking about. I'm also going to be hosting our friends at Datto next week on Tuesday, November 10th, to talk about how you can overcome some pricing objections and protecting your margins because we know that, that is something that is very sensitive in these times. So these are two great webinars that you're going to want to uh, sign up for to to connect with us. Of course, looking forward to chatting with your colleague uh, Bill on the 18th. So with that said, we also do have a few uh, takeaways for you to, to grab today. We're going to drop these links inside of the chat window. Um, both from Carlos and Cynthia. So first, uh, you can take a look at LionGuard's free onboarding guide. So we've got the link in the chat there so you can see uh, some of the tips that we covered today and take those and implement those in your team. On the IT Glue side, we also have our onboarding and offboarding methodology white paper that you're available to take advantage of. And that's at the link that we're also going to drop in the chat box as well. And there you're also able to sign up um, for specials that we have uh, with IT Glue. So if you're currently not an IT Glue subscriber, you can take advantage of some of the uh, promotions that we have going on, uh, teaming up with LionGuard to deliver uh, that to you. So with that said, let's jump and see if we have any questions. All right. Um, Michael asks, what is the fastest way to get RMM deployed to all endpoints while customers are remote? Now, that's a good question. Um, Scott, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I... uh, you know, I think this comes down to setting expectations with your end users. You know, getting access to computers is going to be difficult. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, you could look at, you know, giving everyone a USB that has the software on there, but I personally, you know, I'm against getting users to put in random USBs because I think they're a security risk because uh, it's so easy to corrupt a USB and put malware on it. Um, you know, I would try to continue to, you know, get your hands on. Uh, it's going to be remote sessions. It's going to be, you know, set up a, a calendar, you know, schedule a time with a technician, you know, five, 10 minutes to get us to remotely connect and connect and install. Or you schedule a time that they can come into the office. Um, you know, try to give both options, you know, schedule that onboarding time when you have a technician sitting in the office, uh, or even if they stop by your office, if you have people in your office, again, every state's requirements are going to be different. Every state's are going to be unique. Uh, but at the end of the day, you do have to get your tool installed on that desktop to, you know, provide the service. So unfortunately there isn't an easy answer. Um, if anyone has an easier answer or something they found successful, please post it in the chat and share it with everybody. Uh, but, you know, if I'm doing it today, I'm pushing a calendar uh, sign up form that everyone and I'm going to have a list that we're going to cross them off as we do them. Yeah, I think there's a there's a couple of different options there. I, I like the idea of, of the calendar invites. Um, I would suggest and, and how we do this at uh, is we. Uh, Onboarding in a different sense. Here at IT Glue, we've in the past nine months we've brought on new staff to our team, so we've had to do the same thing. Um, as we have a, a, a dedicated day of the week, it's usually Thursdays um, that people can come into the office, and we have uh, it's either myself or someone else there, and we're 
uh, making sure their laptops all set up, that they have all the applications they need, everything is set up the way they need. Um, so, you know, we encourage the remote sessions if they start on a Monday or a Tuesday, but then Thursdays is a dedicated day to make sure that everything is, is all set up and ready to go. All right, so we have a question about how network glue works compared to LineGuard um, and uh, how they compare. So I'll, I'll talk a bit about network glue and, and they kind of they kind of take on a, a so they have some similar overlapping you know, features. Network glue is designed to provide visibility into a network, uh, specifically if you're in an office. So you have uh, all these devices, IoT devices, printers, wireless access points all these things and you can deploy our software onto the network and it will just find all the devices, create a topology map that's available in IT glue that is automatically being updated and make sure that you have that information in there. So uh, LineGuard has uh, some similar uh, stuff to that. Scott, I'll let you talk about uh, what you do and don't do in terms of network discovery on a, on a network. Yeah, absolutely. So we're not going to create the topology map. Uh, we do have a network discovery inspector that will scan the network and try to identify the devices. Uh, really, the power of that is the automated uh, discovery capability of, hey, I found a sonic wall or I found X device and trying to then trigger and tie that into a different inspector that you need to enable. So that's really, I think the comparison uh, is there is some overlap. There's things that Network Glue is going to do that, you know, the LionGuard discovery doesn't. Uh, but LionGuard also takes it. Our approach is we're covering the entire MSP stack. Uh, we have over 40 inspectors that are in production and that's everything from AWS to Office 3 or Microsoft 365, Azure Active Directory, your cloud components. Then we're getting into your firewall components, your switch components, uh, even the whole way into your like SolarWind RMM or Ninja RMM to give you some insights there. Um, but we're, we're looking at your entire stack. We're bringing all of this data together into one place. You know, I really recommend, you know, signing up, you know, take a look at that onboarding guide ebook, uh, but also signing up for a one-on-one -on -one demo and really seeing the full power that I, uh, that LionGuard can bring you and how it integrates with IT Glue. Totally. Yeah, they're just, they're two different methodologies to this. As you know, there's a, a lot of different network discovery tools out there. You can download a free one that's going to like there's that that is kind of the foundation of, <laughs> of any of these tools yeah um and i think this help answers terrence question as well as he asked if there's a collection app that goes on site if you're using line guard and um if they stop if the network goes down does that data get deleted from it glue or what happens to that yeah, so we do push out uh, through LineGuard, we push one agent or we have you install one agent per client. Uh, and that agent is really what's transmitting the data that's happening behind the firewall into LineGuard. Within LineGuard, we save all of the customer data that we import for up to 12 months. So you're getting a 12 month look back at the data. With that, we can give you change management, change detection. We can have you compare data points, which is actually a really nice one when you're comparing year over year, where you can go back that 12 months and actually compare where they are today uh, and use that as you're getting ready to go into the client meeting and saying, hey, a year ago, you had 10 workstations, you're up to 26 today, we're billing you for 18. So, you know, where's those extra six devices or something? So, you know, looking at that timeline of it, looking at the comparison, looking at that data, that data is going to stay, even if the, you know, network went down for a timeline, uh, time period, you're just not going to get that data print, but we're going to get the data print on the next one when the data is, when the network's back up. So that's really what that agent's there to do. It's to transmit that data into Lion Guard, and we're keeping it, you know, like I said, for 12 months. And uh, probably when you hit 12 months, there's going to be plans to keep it longer than 12 months, or at least options. Awesome. Carl asks, um, what data is going to be pulled um, that your current RMM tool doesn't already pull? So uh, I think you mentioned things like AWS, Azure, Microsoft 365. Um, you said there's already over 40 inspectors, right? And uh, that is unique to LineGuard as opposed to your RMM tool, right? 
Yeah, we have over 40 inspectors. So we're pulling your RMM is, you know, getting that pulse. That's getting that three to five minute look of the core components of every workstation, every server. Uh, some of them do switches and firewalls really well. Some of them don't do it as well. So you're getting kind of that constant heartbeat of what's going on inside, you know, those workstations, those servers. LineGuard is more like an MRI machine where we're doing that deep analysis of what's there, what the configuration looks like. So you can actually write your best practice guides and then actually use LineGuard to cross check your best practices to compare if they're meeting it. I mean, let's be honest, we've all had that technician troubleshooting an issue, made a change somewhere thinking it's going to fix it, moves on to the next thing and forgets to change that back. With LineGuard, you know, we're monitoring those changes based on your best practices. And if that sways away from what your best practice is, you're either getting an alert, a notification and change tracking, or a ticket directly into your PSA if you're using ConnectWise or Autotask. Nice. And David asks, what are the key factors and processes to improving that onboarding maturity? So uh, some of the things that we talked about include uh, developing checklists that are going to ensure that you have down to every single service that you offer all the data that's being pulled in there. So moving those checklists into a solution like IT Glue, making sure that the data you need to capture is uh, marked as required in IT Glue and that you have places to put it. And then uh, starting to implement those checklists into uh, automation as well. So uh, instead, you know, a, a checklist that I used to have when I did onboarding was to run a network scan and that checklist was written five years before I got there. So it was to 2010 was that when that checklist was written and we had our RMM tool that was able to do it. This was before Lion Guard and IT Glue existed. Um, and so that checklist wasn't in alignment. So we had to make sure that as we bring on new tools and new features are released in our software packages that we update our checklist to make sure that we're taking advantage of those automations. So I think that you know some of the processes are going to involve things like inspector installation uh, with LineGuard, potentially network uh, topology diagramming with network glue, um, and getting access into into cloud systems and connecting them into LineGuard is going to be a um, some really key process that you need to help increase your uh, onboarding maturity. Yeah, if I can just add to that, you know, absolutely, you know, automation I think is the biggest aspect of that. One thing that LineGuard is able to do with some of our inspectors like Microsoft 365, Cisco Meraki is, you know, they're MSP based, you know, and you have all your tenants underneath it. So those configurations are set up as a parent child. So you're setting them up once. And when you add new tenants underneath that parent account under your MSP account, they're automatically tied into LionGuard without any extra configuration. So you're just pretty much going in, clicking the box, tying it to the customer and it's going to run. So that right there automates that process. I remember when I was at the MSP, before LionGuard, I had a checklist. It was an Excel document. It was messy. Uh, and it was roughly five pages long of every step from the moment the customer verbally committed that they're coming on to us or, you know, joining our MSP as a partner uh, the whole way down until, you know, that 30 day meeting. And I even had a line in there for schedule the one year meeting or the next QBR. So, you know, a very thorough documentation of what steps you want to see accomplished. Uh, now, like I said, that was before LionGuard. I was actually able to eliminate about one whole page with LionGuard integration because LionGuard took the documentation aspect, which is one of the most time consuming aspects of that checklist, and it automated it. And it didn't just automate it, but it automated it once. And then eight hours later, it automated it. And eight hours later, it, you know, it documented it constantly, continuously. So I was able to standardize, secure it, uh, and ultimately scale my MSP. Nice. Yeah, automation is, is the buzzword and is definitely something we're going to see a lot of in the next uh, couple of years. And LineGuard has really taken charge of that. And, you know, the tools like IT Glue, we're just making it accessible and easy to find. So with that said, I wanted to uh, take this time to thank you for uh, all attending today. Uh, and thank you to Scott for uh, hosting this with me and all of our friends at, at LineGuard. Us at IT Glue are very happy to, to be here. Like we mentioned, we will have a recording for this available and it will be emailed to you out shortly. Scott, any closing words to take us home? 
No, thank you guys all for joining. I think it was a great session. Uh, if you want to get a, if you're not an IT Glue partner, take a look at it. IT Glue, absolutely one of the favorite documentation tools that I've seen that I've used in the MSP space. Uh, and same thing with LineGuard. If you're not using it today, reach out, schedule a one-to-one -one demo uh, right from LineGuard.com, right from IT Glue. Take a look at the products. You're going to love them if you're not using them today. Sounds good. Thanks, Scott. Have a great day, everyone.